welcome to all this video lecture is for control system and the topic for this, this video lecture is root locus we have already covered the lecture one which is about the introduction and basic terminology used in root locus and this is lecture two in which we are going to see some rules for plotting the root locus basically these are the properties of the root locus which is going to be very helpful for plotting the root locus for any given system the learning outcome for this video lecture is at the end of this lecture the students are able to sketch the root locus for the given system here we have taken a very simple second order system which is having a characteristic equation s square plus 2s plus k we can simply find the root of this characteristic equation as s1 and s2 and uh, k is the gain of the system and by changing the value of the gain we can find the different roots so if we put k equals to 0 then we have s1 equals to 0 and s2 is equals to minus 2 and by changing the value of k from 0 to infinity we have different roots and by plotting the trajectories of these root what we have is the root locus for the given system this looks quite simple but when the number of poles and zeros are larger then this method for plotting the root locus is going to be very tedious task so basically what we are going to do we are going to see some properties of the root locus and use those properties to sketch a rough root locus graph and then we are going to refine our sketch by finding the imaginary axis crossing condition breakaway break in point angle of departure and other things so the rule one is we know that the number of branches in the root locus is always equals to the number of open loop poles the rule one is very simple the number of branches in the root locus is always equals to the number of open loop poles and the root second is the root locus is always symmetrical about the real axis if we are having a complex pole then we are having a complex conjugate poles that's why always the root locus is symmetrical about the real axis and the rule third is uh, in rule third we are going to find the segment on the real axis which is the part of the root locus and as i already told that if we having a point then num if the number of poles and zeros to the right of that point is odd then that point is the part of the root locus and how and uh, now the question arises why odd number of poles and zeros and why to the left so the answer of this question is in the phase condition we know that if any point lies on the root locus then the phase contribution contributed by the loop transfer function is equal to the odd multiple of 180 degree so if we are taking any root locus then it is having simple pole or simple zero or complex pole and complex zeros so the net angle contributed by the complex pole and complex zeros is always zero because uh, the angle contributed by both of them are cancels each other now the uh, we are having only the poles and zeros so if any pole is located at a left side of the point then the angle contributed angle contribution is zero and if any polar zero is located to the right of any point then the angle contribution is 180 degree now if at any point if the number of root poles and zeros to the right of that point is odd then only we are having this condition that we are having odd multiple of 180 degree so if we want to find the point in the real axis which is to be the part of the root locus then simply we are going to see the number of poles and zeros if the number of poles and zeros to the right of that point is odd then that will be the part of the root locus 
and every root locus begins at poles and end at zeros here we can see that we have we have two poles at minus 1 and minus 2 and we have two zeros at minus 3 and minus 4 so here we can see that the root locus start from these two poles and ends at these two zeros so root locus always start from the open loop poles and end at open loop zeros and rule 5 is about the asymptotes if we are having p number of finite poles and z number of finite zeros then p minus z number of poles are approaching towards infinity by following the asymptotes fine so here uh, we can find the angle of that asymptotes by using the simple formula that is 2m plus 1 pi upon p minus z here we can see that uh, the number of pole in this figure is uh, 1 2 3 and 4 and a finite 0 is 1 so p minus z equals to 3 so we are going to put these values in the formula of theta a and we are having three angles one is 60 degree 180 degree and 300 degree so we know that there are three asymptotes the first one is at an angle of 60 the second one is at the angle of 180 and the third one is at 300 degrees and I already told that all the asymptotes are going to intersect each other at a point which is called as centroid so we can also find that centroid by using the formula for the centroid here what we are going to do we are having a pole at 0 minus 1 minus 2 and minus 4 what we are going to do we are going to sum these values we are going to sum these values and after that we are going to sum the zeros position here we have only one zero so minus three and then we are going to subtract these things and divided by p minus z then we are having the value of the centroid here the value obtained is minus four by three which is greater than 0.1 so you can see that We are having three asymptotes at 60 degree, at 180 degree and at 300 degree and all these asymptotes are intersect each other at sigma a which is the centroid for the given system. By using these simple formula we can find the asymptotes angle and the centroid. Now the rule 6 is about the breakaway and break-in point. When we are having a segment in the root locus in between two poles, then at that point we are having breakaway point. We can see that here we are having two poles and in between these poles the root locus lies. So here what we are having is breakaway point. And here we can see that when uh, any segment of the root locus is in between two zeros, then at in between those two zeros we are having break-in points. And finding these break-in and breakaway point is simply a minimization, maximization and minimization problem. What we are going to do, we are having the characteristic equation like that. Then we are going to find that characteristic equation in terms of k then we are going to find dk by ds and equate it to zero the solution of that equation gives the break in and breakaway point fine just we have to find the characteristic equation equate it to zero and find k equals to something and then we are going to differentiate 
with respect to s and by solving that equation we are having the solution for the break in and break away points here we can see that the solution of this point is s1 and s2 which may be a break in or break away point if uh, if the value of k is maxima at that point then that point is for the break away point if the value of k is minima at that point then that is for the break in point now uh, we are going to find the intersection of the root locus with the imaginary axis and this we have already covered in root locus if we are having the s to the power 1 th row all element of s to the power 1 th row is 0 then we are having complex poles so we are going to use that same route hurwitz criteria for finding the intersection of j omega axis what we are going to do we are going to put the s to the power 1 th row of the root locus is equals to 0 then we are having the value of k and by making the auxiliary equation and solve it we are going to have that uh, complex po uh, imaginary poles now the rule 8 is angle of departure and angle of arrival when in our system when we are having complex poles or complex zeros then we are having a angle of departure and angle of arrival respectively the angle of departure and angle of arrival is also going to find by the same phase condition we can see uh, how we can find the angle of departure and arrival like here here we are having two poles which are complex conjugate and one other pole at minus 3 and we are having one zero at minus 2 so for the angle of departure we have to find at what angle these poles are going towards the infinity so what we have we know that uh, if any point in the s plane is the part of the root locus then the net angle contribute contribution is always the odd, odd multiple of 180 degree we are using that same condition and here the angle contribution by this pole by this pole is theta 1 and when we are having the angle for the poles we are uh, writing it with minus sign and when it is a 0 then we are going to write it with positive sign so here we are having uh, the angle theta 1 so we have write minus theta 1 then similarly theta 2 minus theta 2 and then we are having another 0 at minus 2 so theta 3 so plus theta 3 as just because this is a 0 and then we are having another pole at minus 3 then theta 4 minus theta 4 for that and we equate it to 180 degree now we can find these angle and we can find the value of theta 1 so this is the angle of departure for that particular pole so we are going to use these uh, things for plotting the root locus and basically that angle of departure break in break away point and intersection with the omega axis is just for the refinement of the root locus and uh, for the problem we are going to do one another video separately and these are my references